The conversation featured in this video was recorded a few weeks before Judy Human passed away on March 4th, 2023. This is one of the five final episodes of The Human Perspective that will be released over the next few weeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Human Perspective. Today, we are going to be meeting with two very um, influential people uh, who are currently living in Pakistan, Abia and Zahida. Um, I've never met Zahida, so this is our first meeting via Zoom. But Abia and I first met face to face in 2005 <laughs> when I worked at the World Bank as their special advisor on disability. So very nice to meet you, Zahida, for the first time. And great to see you, Abia. Thank you so much, Lidi. It's so good to see you. And it's always great to talk to you. And we are really honored to have this discussion with you today. Thank you. You're welcome. Zahida, it's so nice to meet you. I've heard and read very important things about you. So maybe we could start off with um, each of you giving a little bit more of an introduction, like who are you and why has the issue of disability rights been so important for you? First of all, I would like to pay thank you to uh, Ms. Abhi Akram and ma'am to you and uh, connecting me with this Zoom meeting. And this is very important meeting regarding the uh, people with disabilities and especially women with disabilities. And um, I am Zaida Hamid, my name. I got polio when I was six months ago. Uh, I completed my master in economics from Bahawzin Zikri University in Pakistan in formal education. And uh, along this, uh, I have developed uh, organization, my organization, Society for Special Persons, is a disabled people organization working in the area of uh, 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 Southern Punjab in Pakistan. And uh, I am uh, also national coordinator uh, of a national forum of women with disabilities and working from the last 15 years with um, uh, Ms. Abhya Akram. And, uh, uh, on the behalf of uh, National Forum and Society for Special Persons, we have um, uh, a lot of work done from the last 15 years, uh, which I will share with you um, uh, in this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Abia. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Jiri. Uh, um, I always like been two decades in the disability sector. I started my work in 1997 uh, when we started the self-help organization of persons with disability in Pakistan. And after that, like when we like started this on communications on the human rights perspective, how we see different organizations engaged, then we realized like we are not the only one in the disability sector but it's the all over the world the movement is there and then we were very fortunate that we get connected with you and got learned a lot from you about the disability perspective when we first time met in 2001 in Pakistan that was also a huge impact on the disability movement where we connected with different organizations so I also like uh, established in 2009 the network of women and girls with disability on the national level and then we moved to the South Asia and the Asia Pacific Women with Disability Networks so I'm the chair of that and now recently we have established a global forum on the leadership of women and girls with disability. I'm also the trustee for Sight Savers UK board and some other the Asia Pacific Women Law and Development Organization. I'm working as a PNM member for them and some other like shoes I'm wearing at the same time because because I won't say the hats because we have to work. So yeah, thank you. So let's step back for both of you because like me, you had your disabilities when we were younger. And so I think what's important for people to learn about regardless of the country that we're from is what changes have um, been evolving in our countries. Uh, Zahida. When did you start going to school? And were you able to go to school with other non-disabled people? Or were you in 
school for disabled children? Um, there was no uh, special education school uh, to avail my mother. So he will try, she will try to educate me in a general education school, but there is a general edu education system is not accepting the children with disabilities. And uh, one of uh, school is uh, newly constructed and um, uh, this school is uh, uh, committed to uh, educate uh, regarding my education and I got my admission in school and uh, in general education school with the commitment of my mother is uh, assist me in, in toilet in school access and classroom access. So I think, you know, your story for my story and many others, our mothers played such an important role in really yeah. helping ensure that we get an education. And yeah. as you're explaining, it really uh, demonstrates that the role of our mothers and our fathers, but the role of our mothers, I think, is very important regardless of where we're from. So Abia, yeah. um, I know you have a brother, Atif, and Atif has a disability and he's older yeah. than you, right? Yes. What was your experience when- Yeah, I it makes yeah. a huge difference because all the rehabilitation and the medical treatment were applied to him, not on me. So my parents were a bit realized like this is not the case. I, they need to focus more on my education. So I was in only like one and a half year old when I started my schooling. But I studied in a special education center because my parents both, they were living in Islam that my father was connected with the education ministry. So he was responsible to establish the first ever special education system in Pakistan because when the uh, president of Pakistan has a daughter with a disability, so he announced that there will be schools of the special education systems in Pakistan. So then my father was but you know responsible for that. So in that way, they were getting a bit of information but again I would say we both like Zahida me we all belong to the culture where disability is still seeing as stigma as discrimination people are just not accepting being a girl with disability woman with disability it's like still people are not accepting still we are facing that so in that time when when we were born at that time people people were really not thinking about education because their mindset was stuck with the rehabilitation, fixing them, or just like feeling very disappointed if you have a girl with a disability. So that was the overall situation, but my parents really helped me to get in you know, the education system. And then they encouraged me to go in a mainstream school. Mm -hmm. And after that, I studied in UK. I was the first woman with disability from Pakistan who got the Shivning Scholarship. And then I studied there. So that was like a bit of a different scenario but again every day was a challenge because in the school teachers were not aware and they were asking me don't use the wheelchair we will carry you up we, you are angel I never get the punishment as well <laughs> so that was the different scenario that was the, ad the advantage yes <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah Zahida um I think you and I be are different ages. Um, and so your experiences are probably slightly different. In the community that you grew up in, Zahida, um, how were you treated, both by your family and in the community? Yes, you can speak in Urdu. I am very happy that in Pakistan, our culture is that 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 our understanding how her mother will 
focus and raise their children because both of them are disabled. So that was very exceptional case for the general community to learn and to understand. जी बिल्कुल इसलिए एक बड़ा ही यानी कि अलग से हट के फिर जिंदगी को देखा गुजारा है लोगों ने तो एक हमें बिल्कुल एक साइड पे कर दिया था उनकी अल्फाज ने उनकी सोच ने लेकिन ये है कि उस उस सिस्टम को हमने ब्रेक किया कि हम लोग आए आगे एजुकेशन के जरिए और अपने काम के जरिए वरना अदरवाइज तो आज हम भी अपने घर में आइसोलेट होते हैं अगर लोगों की बातों पर हमने अमल किया होता तो लोगों का तो रवैया आज भी वही आज से जो चालीस साल पहले था पचास साल पहले था still the situation is same but at that time if we accept the wording people have used for us or the attitude they were carrying if we accepted that one then it's for us like we would be in the same condition because they have excluded us from the general community and at that time my parents and everyone were feeling very bad because of the wordings people were using and the stigma and the discrimination but we we accepted my parents accepted the disability and they have given us the education that's why we were able to break those barriers of attitude sahida you mentioned in an article that was written mm-hmm. about you that when you graduated from college you were still having difficulty getting a job what was happening at that time ke meri sari education jo thi na journal thi to hamare systems ke andar जनरल सिस्टम के अंदर जो डिसेबल चिल्ड्रन थे या जो डिसेबल स्टूडेंट थे तो उनकी उस तरह से इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एक्सेप्टेंस और इसकी मैनेजमेंट नहीं थी तो इसी जनरल एजुकेशन में मैंने तालीम हासिल की और उसके बाद जो रोजगार के चैलेंज आए वो एक अलग नोयत के थे कि लोगों ने एक दफा फिर मुझे बताया कि यू आर द डिसेबल एंड व्हील चेयर she saying like it was really like when i studied i was in a mainstream school so all of my education was in the mainstream school there was no accessibility and it was really challenging to go to the education process but i completed i did that but after that when i went for the employment then again people told me that you are disabled and it was very obvious because i was not getting any employment opportunities and it was really hard for me to struggle for that yeah what did you do how did you get okay. your first job apne kya kiya aur kaise mili aapko pehli job pehli job maine jahan se maine school jis school se maine matric kiya tha usi school mein maine job li aur ye bada hi experience mera is tarah ka tha abhi jis school mein maine 10 saal padha us school ne sirf ek maa mujhe job di unke dil mein ye fear aana shuru ho gaya ke ye disable hai अब ये हम अपने बाकी क्लासेस को हम कैसे मैनेज करेंगे जो जब उन्हें खुद देना पड़ा तो उस वक्त सोच बिल्कुल बदल गई जब मैं 10 साल तक पढ़ती रही उस वक्त नहीं चेंज आया मतलब उस वक्त तो किसी ना किसी तरीके से मैनेज किया एम्प्लॉयमेंट के हवाले से तो बहुत ही बड़ा चैलेंज है डिसेबल पर्सन के लिए और फिर वहां से मैंने बलोचिस्तान में प्रोवेंस में जॉब की और फिर इसी तरह एक और इधारा है एस पी जॉब की और फिर सोसाइटी फॉर स्पेशल पर्सन का सफर Okay, she's saying like um, I studied in that school for ten years, and after that ten years, I got the job within the same school. So they started their accessibility and the changes just because I was there as an employee, not as a student. So then they started listening to me and created all that changes. And then she moved to another province for a while in Balochistan. She worked over there. Then she went back to Multan and worked with another. organization as peer and after that finally she has established her own organization society for special people so um if you could give us a little bit of information about the organization that you helped create society for special persons uh ek organization ke upar start hua yani ke maine jab ek general organization mein kaam kiya तो वहीं से मुझे अंदाजा हुआ कि अफराध बाह मजरी की जिंदगी में राइट्स की कमी है हमें एक राइट्स के लिए हमने सोसाइटी फॉर स्पेशल पर्सन को बिल्ड किया यानी कि एज ए डिसेबल पर्सन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के भी आप फिर मुख्तलिफ काम किए और उन काम को फिर स्मूथ करते हुए फिर हमें डायरेक्शन क्लियर हुई और हम लोगों ने फिर अपने क्राइटेरिया सेट करना है लाइव रूट पे काम करना है कस्टमाइज व्हील चेयर है सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स हैं और क्या कहते हैं अफराद बहामाजरी के लिए जो स्पोर्ट्स है रिक्रिएशन एक्टिविटी है एडवोकेसी है अवेयरनेस है ईच एंड एवरी थिंग वी हैव ट्राई टू डन इन लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स she has worked on the advocacy on the leadership trainings 
like all those diversified areas they have been like doing. When did the two of you meet each other? 2008. In 2008. <laughs> leadership conference? Um, I would say like in 2008, we have organized a leadership conference of persons with disability. So we invited all the DPOs in Islamabad to have that conversation. Every year we organize the leadership conference where the disabled people organization, they come from their provinces to talk about their work, their experiences. And at that time we met with Zaida as well. And, and like we started focusing more on women and girls with disability. So it's very important important to have this platform where women with disabilities themselves can advocate yeah so was it difficult for you both as disabled women to really step forward and advancing this as a major issue it it was really challenging because all the disabled people organizations leaders were men with disability so when we talked, like they were very encouraging, okay, come talk about their rights and all. But when we get together and we ask for our place, we need a panel, we need to talk in a specific forum, then they felt extremely insecure. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying it loudly. Like it's not, it was not expecting from their side, maybe it was really challenging to address that. But later on, slowly we built that like platform we met with all those amazing women not only Zaida but in Punjab in Sindh even Balochistan in the very really deprived areas and those women were part of the disabled people organization so they came and joined our network and we you know started joint trainings joint initiatives it's like quite a different story how we build the network in Pakistan and very unique space because now we have almost thousand plus women with disability in Pakistan who can like contributing actively individually and in all the disabled people organizations main focus is on women and girls with disability so if you get chance to come to Pakistan we will definitely organize the national conference of women where you can see <laughs> all those amazing women we just had yesterday a conference in one of the province in Sindh as well so there were like hundreds of women were there <laughs> so it's like kind of pretty amazing work yes like that अभी मैं कह रही हूँ कि बहुत अच्छी प्रोडक्टिव शेयरिंग हो रही है तो चैलेंज तो थे चैलेंज मतलब क्या सेटम्स के भी थे सोशल कल्चर के भी थे एक्सेसिबिलिटी के और बहुत सारे चैलेंज डिवाइस के बहुत सारे चैलेंज तो मतलब लेकिन ये कि उन सारी चीजों को ओवरकम किया है काम के जरिए कोशिश की है एफर्ट्स किए हैं वो सारे चैलेंज आज भी है हमारी दूसरी हमारी जिंदगी में हमारी भी दूसरी डिसेबल फीमेल की जिंदगी में भी लेकिन हमने अपने आप से कमिटमेंट की हुई है कि हमने कुछ ना कुछ करना है और अल्लाह उसमें हमारे आसानियां दे रहे हैं हम काम कर रहे हैं yeah she's saying like yes we've struggled and we like overcome those challenges by our commitment by our vision and we are doing it now still we are facing a lot of challenges but again we are trying trying to do it. So we hope that we can continue that work in future. Yeah. So let's talk about some specific changes that you've seen happening. So when we look um, at the Society for Special Persons, what do you see as some of the changes that the organization has been able to make, both with individual people and within the community. Usme na sabse bada change to ye hai ke matlab government ki sata par bahut change aaya policy and legislation level pe. Secondly ab ya jo customized wheelchairs ka humne program diya usko bada accept kiya gaya government ki sata par bhi aur matlab ke organizations level pe bhi community mein bhi aur ab Pakistan ke andar wheelchairs aur assisted devices ke upar bahut zyada kaam ho raha hai. Third one is ye hai ke accessibility ke upar humne kaam kiya तो पाकिस्तान के सतह के ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा नोटिफाइड किया गया इसको सपोर्ट किया गया और पाकिस्तान में आज एक्सेसिबिलिटी के ऊपर काम हो रहा है तो ये है कि जिस पॉइंट पे भी हमने काम किया उसको गवर्नमेंट के सतह पे बड़ी पजीराई मिली और फिर वो कम्युनिटी ने भी फिर उसको उस तरह से एक्सेप्ट किया 
Yeah. yeah, she's saying like uh, we have worked on the accessibility and especially the customized wheelchairs because that was very different in Pakistan. We were not having earlier the wheelchairs, so that was recognized by the government of Pakistan. We also worked on the policies that was policy reform and the legislation that was also very positive and accepted by the government. So these are the big uh, achievements we have, and we also worked on the accessibility for persons with disability. So in her area specifically, the assistive devices, um, customized wheelchairs, all the support was provided for time. And she has made the wheelchairs according to the local culture. So you will find beautiful wheelchairs with bright colors for women with disabilities. That's great. Um, how do you feel the work that you've been doing, Zahida, is changing the views of disabled people and their families. Logo mein sabse bada change ye aa raha families ke andar logo mein ki unko acceptance aa rahi hai disability ke hawale se ki person with disabilities do their own work and matlab ki ye this is a different lifestyle and not a stigma matlab ki unke zehno mein jab ek impact aata hai ye ki ki jab ye person with disabilities wheelchairs pe kaam karte hain to unke andar ek confidence build ho raha hai disability ke hawale se aur wo phir apni family ke andar bhi jo unke person with disabilities hai unko empowered karne ki koshish kar rahe hain aur idaron aur government ki satah par bhi afraad ba mazuri ke liye proper legislation ke upar kaam ho raha hai yeah i see she saying like if it's really uh, like the change is coming in the attitude of the people because when they see people on the wheelchair are working they are more visible and they are mobilized then the families also felt like this is very important to have our kids that kind of like life where they are working and yeah so that kind of change is coming in the attitude of the people and that also automatically impacting on the government side as well abia so you are doing work yeah both uh, in Islamabad and across the country. And um, talk a little bit more about what types of changes women in particular are wanting and what types of changes have you seen in almost 20 years now with the work that you've been doing? I felt like we still like have to do a lot because women with disabilities are still facing gender-based violence, sexual harassment. These were the areas which were never been discussed in any of the platforms, not even in the organizations of persons with disabilities, not in the mainstream gender movement about the rights where they will get access to justice. For in case like if I got gender-based violence or sexually harassed, I don't have any place to talk about it. My families will not allow me to talk. And then police departments are not accessible. Medical legal services are not there. So that kind of new like perspective is coming out women with disabilities we are training them we are providing them assistance on psychosocial support to understand and talk about it on the other hand i would say in the recent flood response the situation is so worse like we have we created that 20 years of work and in one flood it destroyed everything still women with disabilities parents they left them behind and they were not accessing to the services the shelters are not accessible they were not counted and that kind of like barriers are still so much visible and so huge but at the same time on the other side if I see like women with disabilities at least they are empowered they are talking about their rights they are not sitting on the corner and crying anymore I won't say like all the women with disabilities but at least few are visible few are taking that lead to talk about their rights so I think in both both sides, the development sector is interested, UN is interested to work in the disability rights. We have the first ever legislation on the human rights perspective because we took some of the parliamentarians with us to the US in exchange program. They learned personally about the American Disability Act. And after coming back, they developed that in the local context of Pakistan. 
Pakistan and we presented that bill and get approved after two like a lot of advocacy effort from all the provinces and the organizations of persons with disability. So that's kind of like changes are coming. We are the member of the Council on the Rights of Persons with Disability. We are the advisor to the National Assembly of Pakistan. So these are the few initiatives on the government side we are taking and contributing. But at the same time for women and girls with disability, I think it's like huge work need to be done. And as you mentioned on the regional level, all over the country, like I work with the Zahida in Punjab, because of Zahida, there are so much have been done. But in many of the areas, we still feel that women with disabilities are not getting that much space. So we have to do a lot. Yeah. I want to also say that um, the conditions for disabled boys and men, while they've also been improving, improving, are still not where they need to be. And one of the reasons why I believe it's very important that both of you and many other women have been stepping forward to particularly ensure that disabled girls and women are integrated into this agenda um, is because as you've been explaining previously, uh, those issues are being marginalized. So I think being able to create efforts that are focusing on disabled girls and women and their empowerment is very important and ultimately, hopefully, improves overall life for all disabled people, not just in Pakistan. Yeah, Abia, what makes you excited about Sahida? about everything. <laughs> Zaida is doing amazing work because every day we just talk about anything just sitting in a meeting and talk about, okay, we have to provide the, maybe the services to women with disability, assistive devices, and the very next week you will hear the news that Zaida have done that. So <laughs> that's like, she is really amazing. And I feel very proud of her because I felt like she is doing, but at the same time, trying to engage more of her team members, other women with disability. And that's right, really a uh, good work she has been doing. So I really want to acknowledge Helen. Okay. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you Jesus. so much. Abia, thank you. This is for award for me. Sahida, I want you to tell me the same thing about Abia. What what do you like mm -hmm. about working with Abia? Abia, जो है ना हमारे पाकिस्तान के लिए एक बहुत ही amazing है क्योंकि Abia जितनी strong है और यहाँ पे women with disabilities के जितने challenge हैं उनके लिए हम सब के लिए एक बहुत बड़ी hope है एक बहुत बड़ा role model है हमारी community के लिए और हम बहुत ज़्यादा इस बात में ना यानी कि strong feel करते हैं और encourage feel करते हैं अपने आप को कि आप भी nationally भी और internationally भी हर जगह women with disabilities के जो मसाइल हैं उनको समझती भी हैं और उनको हल करने की कोशिश करती हैं उनको reflect करती हैं हमारी community के साथ connect करती हैं हम जो हैं basically followers हैं आबिया के आबिया को देखके ये सारी चीजें हमने आगे loves जो है women with disabilities वो आबिया से हमने सीखा और उसको empowered कैसे करना वो हमें daily basis पे update करती हैं thank you जी thank you so you want me to translate that or not well I can't say it better <laughs> yeah she's saying like um it's like we learned a lot from Abia that's it I know I know she's saying like uh, it was really like um in, uh, from the first time when we started working on the rights of women with disability so that um, I have given them the all the information and it was like because of me she has the hope and she's trying to get work in the disability movement but that was like all the support I have provided to her and all the women with disabilities not only in Pakistan uh, it's either you can speak in English <laughs> you are speaking so well. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Abia is only one in Pakistan Abia is only one in Pakistan in world and it Thank sounds you. like you're the you two are each a force onto yourselves, and the two of you coming together, it feels like it helped yeah. ignite work, um, not only in Pakistan. Let me just for one minute um, 
focus on the point that you were raising, Abia, in relationship to uh, violence against disabled girls and women. When did both of you start moving work from just in Pakistan to looking more regionally at issues affecting disabled girls and women? And was one of the driving forces, uh, both the issue of limited voices and the issue of sexual violence? Yes, for the gender-based violence, like it was not that much ago because we were just like recently, quite recently, we have uh, witnessed those women and girls with disability who got sexually harassed. They reached out to us and they talked about it. That was first time. It was really, you know, with the um, uh, earthquake in Pakistan at that time, many of the women, their family left them behind. So it was like really challenging. And then there were so many cases were reported. There was a psychosocial support, like one of the women, she was saying she got three times pregnant because she was intellectual, having intellectual disability. And her mother was saying, like, we cannot do anything except the forced sterilization because I have to do the domestic work. And when I go out, then I found my daughter become pregnant. So that was like quite challenging and um, difficult for us what and where we can respond how we can support her so at that time we reached out to UN especially UN FPA we have started our comprehensive plan work with them to talk about gender-based violence and they said like it's not easy to talk about it it's really like about your security providing that safe space to women with disability it's about their segregate the data confidentiality it's about providing them the assistance if you're not able to provide them the assistance you don't have the right to get that information so that was like a comprehensive plan which we have started by women with disabilities for women with disability and it helped us a lot it's really creating a positive change in Pakistan now organizations are aware about it and they are talking bit about this and I think this made a huge change in the first perspective of gender-based violence. But at the same time, I feel on the regional level, when I started work at that time, I was part of different conferences, meetings, the Asia Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development and all. So there we realize still there is a gap of having a collective voice of women and girls with disability. So then I formed that forum in collaboration with the International Organization and Asia Pacific Women Law and Development Network. They assisted us to form that group and then the movement you know just started on the regional level as well and then on the global level it's the same like we felt like it's important to have that ground to global voices need to be heard so many of the provinces were not getting that much space to talk about women with disability from their cultural context and all so that was the important point where we started yeah I did you want to answer the question uh, as a female with disabilities, because I am also a disabled female, I mean, it means that gender-based violence has been seen in every lens. Every disabled child who came to us, we were seeing every kind of violation in gender and disability. So, this is the reaction that the children who are mentally challenged are very difficult for them. They are torture with them, mentally and physically. And with this, the physical and the physical cross-disability are very difficult for them. So, they are also very difficult तो ये चीज ऑब्जर्व की गई है कि उनको मतलब है कि एज ए फीमेल होने की बिना पर और ज्यादा जेंडर बेस्ड वायलेंस का सामना करना पड़ता है या She's saying like for especially for the intellectual disabled women, they are the first one who got sexually harassed or violence against women like all their lives so that she has been seeing from girls age to the women and everyone they are facing 
so much violation and harassment, but they are not able to talk about it because of the stigma and the cultural context. I just want to add here as well, like most of the women with disabilities are not married in Pakistan. I only in Pakistan, I know it's a challenge all over the world, but for us being a Muslim woman and then in the cultural context, it's a bit challenging to get our sexual rights and having families and also at that time people are not talking about the gender-based violence or the sexual needs in front of us that's why women with disabilities are not very much aware what it is they realize once it happened so that's the reason like we are not able to report it we are not able to share with anyone like what is happening and all so yeah so that was the reason. Are women with disabilities, for example, who are blind or deaf, are they involved in this movement also? Yes, we have huge, huge like number of blind women. Deaf women are the extreme one because they are really active. If you just send a text message, you will like in the minute it will spread like a news. So they are so actively connected with each other. We have a strong movement of blind women with disability and the deaf. Yeah, for the intellectual still we don't have that much um, women with dis intellectual or the psychosocial needs are not that much active, but still we have in few of the provinces are working but not that much visible so that's very unfortunate but still it's an overprotection overprotected <laughs> environment it still exists so yeah are you finding that women's organizations that previously were not including disabled girls or women are you getting them more involved on the issue of including disabled girls and women uh abhi ab wo log include karte hain lekin jitna the dpo matlab ne andar absorb karti hain disabled persons females ke masail ko to mainstream organizations unko as a bas apne ek objective ke taur pe hi saath leke chal rahe lekin un wo itna deaf hai nahi usko deliver kar pa rahe jitna ke person with disabilities ke daron ki commitment hai jitna wo deliver kar rahe hain contribute kar rahe hain strengthen kar rahe hain sector ko इस लाइन को ब्रिज कर रहे हैं जितना डीपीओ कर रही है उतना मेन स्ट्रीम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बस जस्ट वो अपने उसमें देखते हैं कि चलो ठीक है इन पर सर वुमेन वुमेनिटीज के लिए भी काम होना चाहिए और कहीं कोई प्रोजेक्ट हो जाता है लेकिन उसके इम्पेक्ट और रिजल्ट जो डीपीओ के होते हैं वो नहीं होते मेन स्ट्रीम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के it's they are including somehow but not like the organization of person with disability um and then if the mainstream organizations they are just trying to fix a number or counting the number that we have women with disability but not providing them the equal kind of opportunity or the equal services and um, because we started working with the corporate sector as well we train their top management to the bottom we that their accessibility audits we train their staff and just try to incorporate uh, persons with disability but again it's like really challenging because the people who came they don't have the set criteria for those organizations the you know the communication gap is there then all so they both are trying but we also creating that opportunities for both of them the educated persons with disability but they have to do the internship in house and at that time we will just train or assist them in understanding the culture of the corporate sector or the ministry of organization and then at the same time the organizations they need more trainings more understanding about the needs of person with disabilities not only fixing them but providing them the proper platform where they can get access to decent good employment yeah so as we're winding down let's spend a few minutes talking about the impact of your both of your work um globally so um you've moved out of just working in pakistan how many years ago I started my first like training I have conducted on the regional level it was in 2010 yeah 2010 i have organized a training on the asia pacific center on disability apcd 
so that was my first time that I have like trained two weeks for the whole regional organizations of persons with disabilities on community-based inclusive development. In 2008, I have established the Commonwealth Young Disability Forum. So it was earlier. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so in 2015, I have established that Asia-Pacific Women with Disability Network. And then on the regional level, continued that work with other UN agencies, Asia-Pacific, uh, regional mechanism of civil society organization, the APRSM. I was the focal person for the disability constituency. So it was in 200 civil society organization, they get together under that platform. So I was working on a disability constituency focal person so for three, four years. So that was like areas where I was working on the regional level. And yeah, but virtually more active because of my studies in UK at that time, I was more connected with globally because <laughs> I was not sleeping. It was kind of a holiday for me. So <laughs> I was just like doing all that coordination in one country. If it's night time, the other country, it's morning time. So I talked to everyone and connected everyone to so <laughs> subject that global network at that time. Yeah. I think what's very exciting about what's happening in this region is that many countries have disabled women's organizations. Yes. And true. so those voices like Zahida and yours um, being brought together is beginning, as you've said, to make some meaningful changes that hopefully over time will continue to have an impact on the rights of disabled girls and women and boys and men to education, employment, having a family, being respected in the community. Zahida, is there one thing that you would like to tell our audience about why it is important to bring the voices of disabled people forward? I want to say that the people who have been able to do the work of the people who have been able to do the work of the people empowered or strengthen karne ke liye zarurat is baat ki hai ke zyada se zyada afraad bahamadri ki jo participation hai aur unki protection hai usko ensure kiya jaye yeah she saying like we have to increase the participation of persons with disability and their protection and their visibility is the most important one and we have to work together on that to increase that visibility and the protection and for you abia mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would say like we need the seat on the table, parliament to the implementation, to the grassroots, wherever it's a work and it's not possible to work in isolation. Organizations of persons with disabilities have very important role to play. International experts like from you, like we have learned a lot. So we need that strong collaboration and connectivity with because now it's not difficult to get access to the people sitting in US or in Pakistan, in Japan, everywhere. So we need more connectivity with everyone, with the engagement of the stakeholders, finance departments, Ministry of Human Rights, we talk about the organizations of persons with disabilities, civil society, everyone and UN, everyone need to be like connected with each other and we have to mainstream so we can develop an ecosystem where persons with disabilities can get their rights equally, not as a charity or the medical like thing. It's a basic, basic right. And that have to realize by the people, all the stakeholders. Yeah. I'd like to thank both of you very much for sharing your time. Zahida, it's an honor to meet you. And Abia, it's mm -hmm. great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shirid. <laughs> Or try to minimize our pain.